It says in scripture that Jesus is our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. And ultimately every king, it says in Revelation, every queen, every president, every mayor, every governor, every ruler will ultimately lay down their crowns, which represents their authority, their might, their lordship, their power. They will lay their crowns at the feet of Jesus, who is our ultimate king, our ultimate Lord, our ultimate ruler, who is a good king, a peaceful king, a true king. And what's so interesting is to understand that we are Mephibosheth. In this story, it's really important to know that by definition, according to scripture, by default, we are not the king's kids. This is so important because there is a, there's a phrase that I hear so often in our culture that is close to the truth, but isn't truly accurate. And the phrase simply goes like this, that we all, all of humanity are God's children. Now on the surface, that sounds right. On the surface, that sounds like, wow, I, I think there's passages in scripture that, that speak to that. I, I can think about times where we are referred to as God's children. So I, I like that idea, one might say, of you know, all of humanity being God's children. However, what can lead us from that place, which isn't a biblical truth, is to a place of entitlement, a place of believing that we, as the king's kids, deserve a place at the table, that we have a right to a place at the table. What scripture actually says is that all of humanity has been created in the image of God. And it says in the Hebrew scriptures that only the people of Israel are referred to as the children of God. Now, what does that mean for the rest of humanity? It means that we are not the children of God. In fact, it says that not just the children of God, but actually all of humanity, because as it says in Romans 3.23, no one lives up to the glory of God. No one fulfills the law that actually all of us, all of humanity fall short. And as a result, all of humanity are enemies of God. And this beautiful reality comes when you realize, when I realize that by default, I am not a child of God. I have no right at a table. I am unworthy to be at the king's table. And in fact, I am an enemy of the king like Mephibosheth was. Scripture says that we are unworthy in our own strength, that we can't, even in our own ability, get to God's household. We can't get to the king's table. Like Mephibosheth, we are unworthy as enemies of the king and we are spiritually crippled, to use that language. We have an inability in our own strength. We can never measure up to that which God requires. And like Mephibosheth, we need to be carried literally and spiritually to the king's table. And here's the beautiful reality of what Jesus offers you and what Jesus offers me and what Jesus offers all of humanity. Like King David saying, I want to show God's kindness to my enemy. Jesus says that perfectly to all of humanity and looks out over all of humanity, knows you by name and wants to carry you to his table. And Mephibosheth, remember, he shows up. He says, I am at your service. I am your servant. And the king, David, showing grace, showing mercy, didn't have to do this, says, I want you to come and I want you to be carried and eat at my table like one of my sons and one of my daughters. And in humility, Mephibosheth responds and says, how would you even do that for a dead dog like me. You see, Mephibosheth knew he was not entitled to sit at that table. He was overwhelmed with gratitude. He was overwhelmed at the grace of King David. A posture of our hearts comes when we realize that we were formerly enemies of God, but Jesus says, I want to carry you to my table. In fact, formerly an enemy, Jesus says, I want to adopt you into my family.
Listen to this passage. This is from Ephesians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul speaking to all of humanity, all those who put their faith and trust in Jesus, this remarkable reality of what God does as a result of our faith in Jesus Christ. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. So again, that phrase that I hear throughout all of humanity, you know, all of humanity is God's children. In actual fact, we're all enemies of God, but through faith and trust in Jesus, which is extended to all of humanity, we can become adopted into God's family. I imagine Mephibosheth for his entire life as he was carried to the table, that tangible reminder that he in his own strength could not be able to get to the table on his own. I imagine he lived the rest of his life filled with gratitude and awe and joy at being seated as a child of the king. And for him to know that he had an inheritance that couldn't be taken away. It says in 1 Peter, chapter one, that we actually have an inheritance in Christ that will last for all of eternity. How remarkable that Mephibosheth's story is my story and it's your story. But the reality is, is that we need to allow ourselves to be carried to the table. Maybe you up to this moment have imagined Christianity or you've imagined your spiritual journey as one in which you are striving to earn God's love. Maybe you've been trying to dabble here or dabble there. Maybe you've grown up in a, in a household, maybe part of a, a religious household where you were told that, you know, God only loves good people. The good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ is that despite being an enemy God makes it possible through Jesus for you to be carried to his table. Every moment of every day can be lived in a deep, rich, intimate relationship with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus, when you, with empty hands of faith, let go of the bad deeds that you think prevent you from receiving God's love and you actually let go of the good deeds that you might think earn God's love and you with empty hands receive all the gifts that the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, longs to give you. Formerly an enemy, formerly a dead dog, as Mephibosheth said, now are part of the family, adopted into the family with an inheritance, with a provision, with the joy to know that you were part of the family. As I heard many, many years ago, I can't even remember the preacher who said it. They said, who is the one that could wake up the king in the middle of the night and not cause the king to be angry? It's only the king's kids. You see, you have a king that will never be angry when you turn to that king. Asking for help, I believe scripture says that even when you bring your frustration and anger before the Lord, like King David did in Psalm 13, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? That the king welcomes us with open arms. That doesn't retaliate anger with anger, but responds with our anger, with absolute love and embrace and grace and mercy and provision. Friends, Let's be people that let Jesus carry us to the table. And may we be delighted when Jesus carries other people to the table. 